this is Jamie with Greater Than Gatsby, and today I'm here to announce our Greater Than Gatsby Submit Your Best Raw End of Summer winner. I can honestly say that choosing just one was so, so difficult. We as a team went back and forth trying to pick the best, and honestly, you guys made it very difficult. So we wanted to show you our runner-up. In addition to editing winner's photo, the runner-up for this month's contest is Gina Netherwood. Gina, we absolutely love this photo. I just feel like she had a long day of playing in the water and is worn out and is just taking it all in. And I think we can all agree that just feels like what the end of summer feels like. So thank you. Without further ado, the winner of the Submit Your Best Raw end of summer theme is Kayla Burroughs. Kayla, thank you so much for submitting this photo to us. We absolutely love it. There are so many things that we just enjoy to include the connection of the siblings and the bare feet. Don't get me started on the bare feet. I think that's what made this photo for us. We love the fact that kids were outside with their feet in the dirt and I just remember as a kid, my parents tell me, put your shoes on and then coming home with feet, dirty, 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 and then bringing out the comment. Yes, I'm showing my age here, bringing out the comment and scrubbing the bottom of my feet, trying to get the dirt off. And to me, this just makes it feel like the end of summer. So thank you. And with that, let's go ahead and get started with how we edited your photo. So we started off editing this photo utilizing Camera Raw. And what we did here in Camera Raw is we actually used one of our fine art portrait presets. We used Grinnell. And when we applied it, we really loved this as our base to this photo. But I do want to make a couple changes here before I bring it into Photoshop. The first is I'm going to go ahead and bring the exposure up slightly. And then I'm going to come down to optics and use our profile corrections and in color mixer we took our saturation of our greens up just a tad and then we finalized it with just removing the grain from Grinnell. So this is where I started in camera raw and then I just opened it up into Photoshop and then we'll go ahead and show you what we did there. So in Photoshop, the first thing we did is we kind of removed some of the little things on the skin and whatnot. So I used the patch tool to get rid of things. So let me show you here. So up here, I think there was a piece of a little bit of a light that was just distracting and I just took it out with a patch tool. And then there was a little cut on her cute little legs. And I just removed that using the patch tool. And this little guy right here, the string, I just used our spot healing brush tool to remove it. And in the final photo, I did clone out some of these little flyaways. I am not going to do that here just to save on some time, but you can use your clone tool to get rid of them or you can keep them. It is totally up to you and what you prefer All right, I think that's the majority of the cleanup that I had to do. It wasn't a ton. There was something in the grass here that I had to remove and I just used the content aware delete method to get rid of it. So with my patch tool, I highlighted it and I just hit delete on the keyboard and make sure that content aware is selected and hit okay. And it did a fairly decent job, but you see I do still have to do some cloning here. So I go ahead, will go ahead and highlight that and drag that to the right. And you can see that took care of the rest of it. So that was the basic cleanup that we did on the photo prior to the full edit. And I think that we are good. So the next thing I did is I did love this little splash of light that we see on the ground. And to kind of amplify it before I continue with the edit, I used the sponge tool at about 20% saturation and I just kind of tapped it on in a few places just to make it glow a tad bit more. Just to highlight that evening light that's coming down 
and making it feel like it's just the warmth is setting behind of them. All right, that's all I would do with that. And with that, we will go ahead and start by utilizing our portrait retouch collection first. And let me bring this open. The first thing I did with the portrait retouch collection is I used Ransack the Reds. I will go ahead and hit play. And when I use Ransack the Reds, the areas that I'm focusing on are the area that has a little bit more saturation in the skin than what I want. I know that as I edit, it's gonna probably get amplified just a bit more. So on a 20% opacity, I just kind of paint it on the skin as a way to kind of reduce those red tones in areas that maybe are a little bit stronger than I like. Just right along here. I'm sure some of it's just coming in from her clothing reflecting and the rest of it here looks great. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and flatten and then I'm gonna go ahead and run the under eye corrector we love this for just adding a little bit of color to the shadows and when I hit play, all I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to hit OK and I am going to scroll into an area of skin next to the darkness in her eye and I'm just going to select that and I'm going to hit OK and then with a black mask and a white brush at 50%, we can go ahead and paint on. So. Right now, my white brush is actually at 40%, and I'm just gonna go ahead and paint on a few little areas, just right under her eye, just to kind of change some of those little darker tones. And it was just very simple, but it's just a way, great way to kind of add a little bit of that peachy color back in. There's a before and after, before and after. We'll go ahead and flatten that. And then the next thing I ran was the Skin Tone Palette. So on the skin tone palette, I'm gonna go ahead and run that. I utilize the skin tone peachy and I just painted it on their skin at about 40% opacity. Just to kind of brighten those tones. Right now they are backlit, so I just want to kind of add that little bit of peachy summer tone to their skin without changing my background. And for the most part, her arm was okay. And I will zoom out and show you the before and after once I get it on here. You can kind of see the grayer areas on his skin. So this was a perfect. And I am not being exact here, but I do want to do a decent job to show you how we edited the final version for you. Oh my gosh, how cute is that little bit of dirt on his foot? We talked about this. It's the absolute best. All right, so this is what Peachy looks like before, and this is what Peachy looks like after. Just to add a little bit of color to the skin, I'm going to go ahead and flatten that image, and then I'm going to run the Rosy Cheek Palette, and I'm just going to add it to the girl only, and we are going to use Peachy Keen today. Let me zoom in and just put a little bit on her face. Just a little bit, just to brighten it up those cheeks just a tad. And then we're gonna flatten. And then I do use the all over eye foundation on just the girl. And I used it at 100% to start and then I'll, I back it off if needed. So here just kind of adds a little bit of definition to the eye to make it stand out just a little bit more. I just love the expression on her face and how she's looking at her brother. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and flatten it. Here you can see he doesn't have any parts of his eyes open facing the camera, so there's no reason to use it. And then I move into lashes and brows. And with lashes and brows, 
I start with lashes at 100% and I just want to define those eyes a bit more. Okay, those are the lashes there. So his eyes in shadow here and then I can zoom out a little bit and I can bring the opacity down to an area that I think looks the best. So around 29% opacity. And then for brows, let's go ahead and bring that brush opacity to about 50% and just paint on the eyebrow area just to make them a little bit more defined. All right. And then I moved on to define the eyes. And this just adds a little bit more detail to the eyes or brings attention to our subject. So let me zoom in. I'm going to use this at 100% opacity to start. And we're just going to add that in. I do add a little bit on the lips and nose as well, just as a way to bring in some detail there. All right. And I will show you what this looks like on and off here before after it's hard to see. Let me bring this in a little closer before, after. All right. For teeth whitening, I only applied it to the boy. So let me go ahead and whiten those teeth just a bit. I think that just being in shadow made them look a little bit darker and I just want them to stand out just a bit. So with teeth whitening, I'm just gonna kindly dab it on to the area that I want whitened. That is obviously too much. I am just doing that so I can see it and then I'm gonna bring the opacity down and kind of bring it back up to an area that I feel like looks best. So when I'm doing teeth whitening, eyes and stuff like that, I start in close and then I bring it out a little bit to see what it looks like from a distance. And you can see that just was all I needed, just a tiny bit to kind of whiten those up or brighten them up a bit since they are in shadow. Then I use Hair So Healthy It Shines on the little girl. All right. And I'm gonna start with 100% opacity just to show you what this looks like. This just kind of made her hair look a little bit more blonde. Like the sun has been bleaching it. I'm gonna go ahead and hit my backslash key just so I can see where I drew it on the hair. All right, that's all I needed. And I'm gonna zoom out, and I'm gonna zoom out and lower my opacity to kind of see where I want it and just see how that just kind of made her hair just a little bit more blonde, just like it's been soaking up the sunshine all summer long. And then next, I'm gonna go ahead and flatten and move on to Paint Me Pretty on the skin. And this is one of our absolute favorites. It looks fantastic on almost all images. It just brings that fresh feeling to skin. Right now I'm painting it on 100% opacity and I promise I will reduce this. I just want to kind of see where those changes are. And I'm gonna move down to 50 for here just to kind of equalize everything. I just really want to bring some of that light to the skin. Back to 100% opacity for here. And I am doing a very rough job here in the recording of the video, but you get the idea. Let me bring this down to his leg. I'm at back at 50% capacity for the legs and the limbs. Okay, and let me show you a little bit of before and after and what Paint Me Pretty actually does here. Before, after, before, after. I absolutely love Paint Me Pretty. So I do see one area of her skin that I just want to kind of match a little bit more. You can kind of see this is a little bit less warm. And so what I would do is I would duplicate my background later and change it over to color. And I'm gonna go ahead and select an area next to it that I like and with a low opacity brush, I'm just gonna paint on a little bit. And that's just gonna go ahead and add some of that color in to kind of match the rest of it. Okay. 
can kind of see those gray hues are now removed and I am just going to go ahead and reduce the opacity to kind of match it a bit more and then flatten. And next is the part that you guys always ask us about and that is how we dodge and burn. We're going to go ahead and play dodge the highlights first and it tells you to make sure you set your range to midtones and your exposure to around three to five percent. So right now we are on the correct dodge tool and here is our range to midtones and we are currently at 5% is where I'm going to keep it. And I'm going to lower my brush and I'm just going to paint on areas that naturally have some highlights already. So you can see right here on her nose, along the bridge and her little chin and you can see right here on her neckline there's some highlights there. And I will zoom out and show you the difference here in a second. We always like to put a little bit of highlights right on the cheekbone. Okay. And a little bit on her arms, just to kind of add some definition. And on the middle of her leg, see there's already a highlight there. We're just enhancing it a little bit. And of course, with everything, we always are more fine-tuned when we're doing this for an actual image we're going to give a client. But today, in essence of time, we're just going to show you the gist of how we did that. A little bit of highlights right here already. So we're just going to bring that in here, a little bit on his chin, and a little bit right here on his nose. I'm going to lighten this up a tad, and a little bit on his cheek right here. You can already see it. And then I also want to add some highlights and some shadows to his clothing just to give it that painterly look. So there is a little bit on his clothing. We're just enhancing the highlights that are already there. We change the size of our brush as we move along by using the bracket key. See, there's a little bit of highlight right here already. And also on her hair, we love adding a little bit of highlights to the hair where they are already occurring naturally, just to make them pop just a bit. Like how cute are these curls? Just how cute are they? My daughters have absolutely the straightest hair and I'm always so jealous when I see these little kids with the cutest, cutest little curls. All right, let me check here. And the boy has great highlights on his hair, so we're just gonna go ahead and enhance those just a bit for that painterly look and make it feel like the sun bleached the tips of those hairs all summer long. And you kind of see these highlights are already there. We're just enhancing them just a bit. All right, and then let me zoom in just so you can kind of see those changes right there. Here's before, right here before and after, before and after. We didn't go overboard. I just wanted to add a little bit, a little bit here and there just to make it stand out just a tad more and to add to that painterly look. I'm gonna go ahead and flatten and then we're gonna move on to shadows. So for burn the shadows, when you hit play once again, you're gonna hit continue and they're gonna have a little message telling you what to set your burn tool to. So here we're gonna set it to midtones and an exposure of three to five percent. And as you can see, I'm already on midtones with an exposure of three to five percent. And here I'm gonna go ahead and enhance the legs and the natural shadows that already exist. And that just makes the highlight actually pop a bit more. And same for the clothing. I just work around the image, kind of defining the areas that already exist. A little bit on his jawline here and there's a couple spots in the shadows just to make those highlights pop a little bit more and a little bit on her jawline and I want to just make this highlight on those pop a little bit more not that much let me go down to two percent on this one and a little bit on her hair in the shadows A 
we go back to 5%. All right, that is a very quick dodge and burn. Let me show you the before and after on the burn. And you can just see it just adds a little bit of definition to their faces. That helps when you're definitely standing back. And with that, we finish with just a little bit of the There She Glows Smoother. Just now to kind of smooth out some of those transitions between the highlights and shadows. I run this on a very low opacity. I just want to kind of blend it a little bit. And this is just a way to kind of make sure that the work I did do looks a little bit more seamless. I'm going to go 40% right here. All right, that just softened it just a tad. All right. The last thing I want to do maybe on the little boy is I just want to increase a little bit of light on his face. So I'm going to run extra fill flash and I will zoom in on him and I am going to go ahead and go down to 20% opacity and just pop it on the eyes and definitely in the shadows in the mouth a little bit and then a little bit on the girl as well. There we go. And I think this is looking so good so far. Let me show you where we were when we brought it into Photoshop. Here's when we brought it in, and here is our portrait retouch edit after, so before, after. I mean, I'm actually going to do one more thing on portrait retouch. I'm going to run glamorous and then just kind of overlay that to kind of add a little bit more definition. That is very strong at first, but we are going to bring the opacity down to about 30% just to give this image a little bit more punch. And you can see that does a great job. Flatten here. And now we're going to go ahead and move on to our Paintly Portrait Collections. So we're going to start with Paintly Portrait Collection 1. And I used the Michelangelo Foundation. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Play. And it is going to be adjusted to 55% for this image. Here is before Michelangelo, and here is after. Let me move this out of the way. Here is before Michelangelo, and here is after. And that just brings attention to my subject. And then I'm going to go ahead and run Campbell's Soup Can. And this just provides a little bit of warmth and definition to the image. And we bring this down to about 50% opacity. So before Campbell Soup Can and after. And then I ran Son of Man next. And that just gave it a little bit of a boost at 20%, not full. Just 20% is all it needed before Son of Man and after. And then I flatten this. And I'm going to move on to one of the fan favorites here which is Warhol. Sorry, it just takes one second. So down to Warhol, I go ahead and run it. And I am going to run this and leave it at 30% opacity once it is ran. I typically stay in the 30 to 40% range for Warhol nearly all the time. But we absolutely love what this does to an image. This is before Warhol and after. And you can see I just love this action so much. We use it so frequently and I think it will always be one of our favorites and one of your favorites too. And so with that, we are going to go ahead and flatten. And I'm going to move into the Painterly Portrait 2 collection next. And I am going to use the Painterly Hair Texture on this. And just to kind of polish this just a bit more, I'm going to go ahead and run it. And my opacity of the brush is going to be at 50%. I'm going to zoom in. And I know this is going to look a little bit crazy at first, but just bear with me. It's just going to smooth it out. And I'm going to basically change that opacity after I'm done. I just wanted to look a little bit more painterly on the final image. Same on his hair. Okay. 
and I know this looks strong. I am gonna change that opacity now. Okay, let me see where I'm at. And I'm gonna lower it down to about right there at 26% before, after, before, after. Just to soften it just a tad. Then I'm gonna flatten. And then I'm gonna run Da Vinci, which is another fan favorite. You will hear folks talking about that in the Facebook group time and time again as something they absolutely love. So Da Vinci, I don't want it on my subjects for this image. I really just want it on the background just to kind of blend it a little bit and to add that tone to it. I mean, so I'm gonna bring the opacity down to about 60%. And then I'm gonna invert it by hitting Command or Control I. And with a large brush, I am gonna go ahead and paint it on areas of the background that I just kinda wanna smooth the tones. And it's just a way of blurring the background just to kind of have things a little bit more refined. And I'm gonna go ahead and dabble it on in the front just a bit. All right, zooming out. So here is before Da Vinci was added and here is after. And I'm gonna go ahead and flatten. And with that, I am going to do one final thing. I'm gonna go back to Painterly Portrait One and I finish all of my images this way just as a personal preference. I love Great Wave and I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and I finish all my images on this. I just like the tone of it. Obviously this is too strong. I just bring this down to about 10% on nearly every image. I just think it finishes off that image just wonderfully. So there is before and after it added. And you can kind of see it just adds a little bit into the shadows. So if my shadows are a little bit dark, this is a great way to kind of like fix that. And I'm gonna go ahead and flatten. And as you can see, this image is now done. Here is our before. And here is our after. We absolutely appreciate, like I said, all those that submitted. We can't wait to announce the next theme of our contest. We want to see more from you. We love seeing more from you. So please make sure you send a big old shout out to our winner, Kayla, for her amazing job in capturing this image. And thank you for submitting, Kayla. We appreciate it so much. And also just make sure that when you do submit next month, Make sure you're submitting those raw images. We cannot use Adobe Camera Raw on JPEGs. So we want to actually see those raw images for a reason because we do want to show you the power of raw, Adobe Camera Raw, and we can't do that on a JPEG just quite as well. So with that, thank you so much for your time. We look forward to the submissions next month. Take care. I hope you have a great day.